listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. And it's time now for another rendition of Erin's recipe card. Hopefully you uh, you all heard the last one and, and uh, made some tuna ring ding. Ring it. Ring it. <laughs> um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed that. So we have another, another one of these recipe cards and this one smells fantastic again. I mm-hmm. wish we had smell a vision in here or whatever it would be called. Uh, so everyone could, could smell, smell it. Smell a sound. Smell a sound. I don't know. Smell a vision sounds um, better. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, and also Aaron brought these in really cute little bowls, which we will post in the Facebook group, um, which you can find at the Lutheran Ladies Lounge on Facebook. We'll post a picture because they are the most adorable bowls ever. So uh, Aaron, take it away. What, what did you make for us today? Today I made spaghetti squash casserole. Mm. And I'm going to start by being very honest this did not come from a church cookbook. And I know last time <gasps> Peter said it did. But I I was inspired by the conversations that were happening on the Facebook page. Oh. And there I observed that there were a number of people who were seeking options to bring to potlucks mm-hmm. that would be th- accommodate things like gluten-free. Yeah. And various other sort of food, I don't know, special food needs. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I mean, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're out there in the old classic church cookbooks, but (laughs) they are not known for their gluten-free friendliness. It's true. So So I decided this time, yeah, go ahead. What you mean to say is that this one isn't in a church cookbook yet. It is but not, yet. but it, it can is be worthy easily, of a church yes, and it can be easily adapted, and that was part of why I thought, because it's fall, and mm-hmm. I always end up with spaghetti squash sitting on my counter, and then they multiply, and then I've got more than one spaghetti squash sitting there on my <laughs> counter, and I'll tell you, I, for a long time, I did not like spaghetti squash. <gasps> it's so good. I know. Well, I think it's because of the name. And I was always disappointed by it because it is a poor, in my opinion, it is a poor substitute for spaghetti. So if that's what you sort of going into it, you're like, ah, oh, spaghetti squash. And then you're like, this is this is not at all as satisfying as pasta. This tastes like disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, that's exactly why I had never cooked a spaghetti squash uh, before you shared this recipe with me. Really? Uh, I am a, I am a <gasps> grower and cooker of squashes. You uh, are. I actually gave Brie a uh, squash that had been turned with Sharpie marker into a Pokemon character. <laughs> um, what? Because I'm we actually had extra. shocked. So I love squash, but I had never done spaghetti squash yeah. because of that exact reason. Because I'm like, yes. it's not spaghetti. Yes. Spaghetti squash is one of my staple meals. I have it at least once a week. Wow. I know. It's through the year too. I am not All a, year a long. I'm not okay. a fall season uh-huh. squash person. I am uh-huh. a we must find fall squash year round because I must have it year round. Wow. I know. Well. There you go. So yeah, so I wanted <laughs> to have something that was seasonal and I had these squash that were just, they keep sitting on my counter and then they multiply. And so after, after some trial and error, this is, this is what I, this is what I landed on and it's very adaptable. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could easily substitute different greens. You don't care for kale. You could try Swiss chard or spinach, mm-hmm. um, cabbage. I love cabbage. Uh, so you could you could swap those out. I personally am a fan of the herbs de Provence. That was that's that's what's listed in the recipe. Uh, that's one of my go to seasonings. It's so fancy. It is, but it's also it saves you time because you don't have to measure out multiple uh, different herbs. It's all ready to go, mixed up. So you can just do it once and you're done. Mm-hmm. Herbs so de Provence tasty. has lavender in it too. Yes, it what? does. It does. It's so you're magical. cooking with flowers, it's and it like, smells yeah. amazing. It does smell amazing. Mm. It's one of my it's one of my go tos. So that's in there. 
I like garlic. You can use more garlic. You can use less garlic. <laughs> Hashtag whatever. all the garlic. All the garlic. <laughs> yes. Um, I enjoy this with spicy Italian sausage, but you oh. could easily make it more kid friendly by going with the sweet Italian sausage. Or you could just do like ground ground pork would be bored boring. Maybe maybe breakfast sausage. Oh, I don't know. You could ex- yeah. you could experiment with different sausage. You could actually make this vegetarian pretty easily by just don't use the sausage and then you're <laughs> you're good to go. It's vegetarian. You could you could probably put in some garbanzo beans. Oh. And it would be a nice vegetarian option. This one does have um parmesan cheese, mm-hmm. but you could easily leave that out if that is if that's an issue. I have not had to have to work around um a cheese issue in my life, so I can't I can't offer some good suggestions as substitutions. But um, I'm nutritional confident. nutritional yeast works. Oh, look at that! <laughs> She's like I'm on it. <laughs> nutritional yeast. I've never had it because I am also intolerant to yeast. Uh, okay, <laughs> but I've heard in my circles that that works uh-huh. well as a cheese substitute. Okay, so there you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, this one is topped with a mixture of breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. Uh, I like the panko breadcrumbs because mm-hmm. they are extra, you know, they're extra sort of light and crunchy and fluffy. At first, I thought that was sort of overhyped, but then I tried them and they were actually really great. They really are so. better. <laughs> Back when I could eat gluten, yeah, they really are yeah, better. They are. <laughs> but if you are looking to avoid the gluten, the gluten in the recipe, you, I'm sure there's gluten free par- breadcrumbs out there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that you could also substitute, uh, like you could probably do a nice uh, chopped up almond or pecan mixture as mm-hmm. your could, sort of crunchy topping. Yeah. Could you do potato chips? Those are oh great. yeah, I'm sure you could do like a crunched up yes. potato chip. Crunched that up would be sweet great. potato chips. Sure. Mm-hmm. There you go. That crunched up sweet potato okay, chips. Okay, can we eat this already? <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> have we have we been I had to step away just for a sec. Have we been through the actual recipe yet? No. 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 So we're gonna make right, Brie so wait tell a me how you made this. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Brie's you like chomping actually, at the you bit. Could start I think you could start tasting it while I'm talking. Okay. I think that's okay. Do I need um, to turn your mic down, Brie? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you start by roasting some spaghetti squash. And you got to cut them in half, scrape out all the seeds, and then you put a little olive oil on them, mm-hmm. turn them face down, the cut face down, and set them on a cookie sheet, and then roast them at 400 degrees. Usually it's about 40 to 60 minutes. It probably depends on your oven and how big the squash are. Uh, so I like to go for a walk because the kitchen gets hot. So mm-hmm. take a little walk while it's roasting. The time isn't too, It's there's nothing too strict about it. So come yeah. back. Once the squash is done, you take it out of the oven and let it sort of start to cool. Uh, meanwhile, you're going to be chopping up your onion and your garlic. You start sauteing that. Add your herbs, whatever herbs you want to use, and you know, just for flavor and zing. You could also add more red pepper if you like it extra spicy. Just mm. add some extra crushed red pepper in there and it'll be extra spicy. Once the onion starts getting soft, then add half of the kale. So you'll want to rinse off your kale and chop that up into manageable pieces. Add half As of the kale. As a resident kale lover, I, yeah. I always take the bone, de- I debone the kale first. Agreed. Well worth it. Yes. Agreed. If you buy the chopped kale, they don't do that. Oh, they don't. Which is really Good annoying. Advice. It's Good fine advice. in smoothies, but not so great in other stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. So uh, add half the kale just because if you add it all, it's too much. It's too, kale is too fluffy. It needs, it's very fluffy. Yeah. So <laughs> add half the kale and let that wilt and then set all of that aside and then start browning your sausage. I... Sometimes I have a hard time finding bulk sausage. Hmm. Um, so I often just get sauce like Italian sausage that's already in the casing, and then I just slice it open with a knife and peel the casing off, and then I've got bulk sausage. So you can also, for those who might be in places that don't have access to sausage, when I lived in Japan... <laughs> when Brie lived... has finished her spaghetti squash and is now drinking water, for those of you that heard that noise. It was so good. <laughs> when I lived in Japan, I did not have access to Italian sausage that I could find easily. So I did a little research and found 
Italian sausage is essentially ground meat with some spices added to it. So、it's、I just、true. made my own. So again, you can you got that option if you are trying to avoid a particular ingredient or you're worried that they the store might have added something that you'd be sensitive to. If you're intolerant to nightshades, exactly. So just <laughs> add some fennel seed. That's the key. Yes. If you want it to taste like Italian sausage, add fennel seed. Yes. You don't really need to add much of anything else, and it'll taste like Italian sausage. So, there's there's your hint there.、So、brown the sausage. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Brown the sausage. <laughs> Once the sausage is browning, add the rest of your kale, and again, let it wilt. You don't want it really turning the sort of browned, overcooked color that greens get. Just let it sort of start to relax in the pan. It'll be bright green, and、um, then then move that. To where the the other vegetables were that you set aside, shred up your spaghetti squash. You just use a fork; it falls right out of the shell, and it's already good to go. You don't actually have to you don't have to do anything to make it hold those spaghetti strands. It does that on its own. It's pretty magical. It is. It's like the、This、best is, part of making spaghetti squash. Yeah. This is one part of the process that my kids were just. Crazy. Let me try that. Let me try that. It's so fun. Every time I、yes. cook it, it's just amazing that it. It's just. It looks like spaghetti. It does. And then、it、I、does. said, "So, do you want to eat it?" And she said,、mm. "No." Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but just it's wait.、So、just wait. Yeah. Yeah. So then you mix it all together, and add about half of your Parmesan cheese. Then just stir that in. Adjust it for some salt and pepper if you need that. You'll want to mix in the Parmesan cheese, about half of it, so that it gets distributed throughout, and then adjust it for salt and pepper. Put it into your casserole dish. You'll you make a topping with the breadcrumbs and the rest of the Parmesan cheese and a little bit of olive oil.、Mm. Toss all of that together, sprinkle it on top. And then pop it in the oven. You probably could have left your oven hot this whole time because it won't take that long in between. But、mm -hmm. it won't take that long to reheat it either. So put it back in the oven and basically just—it's already should be pretty hot, so it shouldn't take long. Probably 15 minutes or so to just get nice and brown、mm -hmm. on top, and then you can enjoy it. Then you can scarf it down. Oh my gosh,、right. I ate it so fast. How was it, Bree? Tell was, us. It was not tuna ring ding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you. So no one was. No one can see what was happening last time. But I was kind of just nibbling、mm -hmm. it. That's true. You were. You weren't. You weren't quite sure about that one. <clears throat> This one. This on the is other an、hand. empty bowl. I'm holding in my hand. It's very empty. And,、yeah. Granted, it was. It's probably what the size of a tennis ball.、Not、it is、even. a small serving. All right, y'all. I don't.、It. I don't currently have one because、um, I have a lot of food intolerances. So there's a whole slew of things that I can't eat, including onions and red pepper and breadcrumbs、mm. and parmesan and herbs to promote. And even though I'm long distance, I made the recipe、yes. in my house. Yes, that is Rachel also made it. Hashtag dedication, right there. So Ra、yeah. Rachel、well, can no, also. Well, no, it's delicious. It's so good. If like me, you got really large spaghetti squashes,、uh, do roast them for a little longer. Or if you forget to roast them for a little longer, maybe take that. Final cooking time up. I took it up by twenty minutes, and it was perfect.、Mm -hmm. um, the flavors really just gelled together. The squash got a little mushier.、Um, my sausage was a little dry, so I added bacon grease, which is、Ooh. the secret ingredient、Very、right next、clever. to love. You could also substitute <laughs> bacon for sausage、oh. in this in this dish. Yeah, that's, you know, that's you your、could. jam. Yeah. What else did you do, Rachel? And I used the sweet sausage instead of the Italian sausage because I thought it would be kid friendly. Spoiler alert: It's not exactly kid friendly. Any way you do it,、um, I hope with a few years practice they'll get it. My my teenager tried it and she said,、mm, "That's actually not that bad." I was so pleased.、Um, but then I said, "So do you want some more?" She said, "No, I'm full."、Hmm. After one bite, so、mm. you know it's like the older you get, you know, the more you're able、level. to naturally appreciate this this dish. But it's me. I'm on my third helping. Um, I don't I'll probably、you. be eating out of it all weekend <laughs> because it's a really tasty dish. And as far as a fall thing, that is,、mm. we often hear complaints from people that、uh, potlucks. Actually, I've been a chief complainer that potlucks don't have enough vegetables.、Mm -hmm. That I was actually going to say. That's another.、Uh -huh. That's one of my often my sort of small wishes at potlucks is that there would be more of the vegetable items. 
Yep. So true. But this dish is basically vegetables with a little sausage and parmesan thrown in for flavor. And it's amazing. It's it's warm and savory and a perfect complement to like if your church has a fall Thanksgiving, you know, potluck get together type thing. Yeah, I was getting this would some, be what like, I'd bring. some like turkey stuffing vibes Ooh, kind of. That's the herbs mm-hmm. of Provence probably. Could yeah. be. The other thing I'll say this freezes well, oh. uh, so particularly in individual portions. So if you make some and maybe you don't put the topping on it, you could do that later. But you can freeze it in individual portions and then you just reheat it however you want to reheat it in the microwave or on the stove, mm-hmm. in the in the toaster oven. Put a little bit of the topping on at the very end. It's also good without the topping, but the topping adds a nice little crunch. Yeah. Uh, so... Freezes well. That makes it, I think, very friendly for small households. Mm-hmm. Hello, household of one. Yeah, because squashes uh, <laughs> are squashes are usually pretty big. Like that they is are. that is not a single they serving are. kind of thing. No. I, I will throw in if anybody has my long list of intolerances like I do, I feel your pain. Um, but this is actually one that I'd be able to um, to make fairly similarly. It wouldn't mm-hmm. taste the same because I can't do pretty much any of the spices. However, mm-hmm. um, the spaghetti squash, um, I can cook that the same way. Um, I can't use any of the spices with the meat, but I could totally do ground beef mm-hmm. um, with lots of Celtic salt. And I use Celtic salt because it has a lot more of uh, flavoring in it. It's less less of the sodium and more mm. of other minerals so it actually has okay. a lot of good savory flavor to it uh-huh. and a lot of olive oil nice spicy olive oil like greek or spanish okay. um and then kale i eat so much kale um so all of the kale and spaghetti squash ground beef um i'd probably do some sort of like almond um flax meal kind of topping mm-hmm. um that's probably where i would have to leave it but it would be delicious. This is actually quite healthy, even like it is. This oh, way. Yeah. Like I probably mm-hmm. just had one serving of vegetables. You probably like, did. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. Oh, one other thing I did. I think I did go over on your olive oil suggestion, which okay. it sounds like Sarah would do similarly. I would because olive oil makes everything better. <laughs> yep. In that case, I'm going to I'm going to update the recipe. So what it's going to be posted on on online, it'll have it'll have bumped up the olive oil to mm. to I'll talk with Rachel and we'll, we'll Doesn't get it matter adjusted. what you put on there. I'm going to like increase <laughs> it by 1.5 because <laughs> olive oil is amazing. It's the Aaron to Rachel olive oil conversion chart. N plus 1.25. Maybe I'll put a range. Oh, maybe I'll put a range, a range. on olive Just oil. Just dump some in olive yeah. oil to taste. Yeah. Just That's be generous. I, I never measure olive oil. I, actually, I'm going to be honest. I didn't measure it either. I was sort of, I was sort of guessing the amount of olive oil that was in there by just, like. Just dump it in. That looks like it's about fine. It's for your health. Three tables. It's, it's health. healthy for you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I have a question before we should probably wrap this up eventually, so people can go make this. Um, <laughs> what about instapotting the squash? Is that an option? Because instapotting spaghetti squash is super easy. Really? I yes. don't see why it's not an option then. I do not have an mm. instant pot. You should so, get one. <laughs> I tell you what, my dad, who's probably listening, he's one Hi, of dad. our male fans, <laughs> uh, was very enthusiastic about the instant pot and wanted to get me one. And I said, I've got enough gadgets. It's I very try useful. And hold back on that. Okay. We just got one yeah. um, because we eat so much squash uh-huh. um, and things that take a long time to cook. Yeah. We got one um, for butternut squash too, by the nice. way. Um, and it's super easy. You still cut it in. Uh, you can do it whole, mm-hmm. but it's very complex to get a whole hot squash yeah, out of the end spot and then have that. to cut it. And it's just it didn't end well when we did it once. Sure. Um, so cutting it in half and seeding it is good. But then when you put it in, um, we did it's seven minutes on manual pressure. Um, and okay. so it takes about like 15 to 20 by the time you, you wait for the pressure to, to come up. But it was so stinking easy. So it's, I mean, it cuts your cooking time down considerably. It means you won't be able to have a walk. Can't take a walk, sorry. It's true. But, but if you need to do it like you and can take a walk actually, first instead. Please never take that out of the recipe because I can <laughs> always point to it and say, see, Luke from cooking is healthy for us. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> cooking right. and exercise all rolled into That's one. That's right. It's a balance. All right. So, so what is the verdict on this one? I'm sad you didn't bring the yeah. whole thing. <laughs> Bree would have just eaten it through our entire recording you could session. You just given me the whole pan and I would have eaten. It's a winner. All right. There we go. Well, 
Aaron, thanks for your your recipe card for spaghetti squash casserole. I think Bree is a fan now. Uh, we will post the recipe in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge Facebook group. You can find it in the show notes for this episode as well. Um, and we'd love to see your spaghetti squash casseroles if you make one. Um, and if you kind of tweak it to what you like, maybe add a different topping. We'd love to hear how you guys do it uh, at home. And maybe if you bring it to a church uh, uh, Potluck. That's the word. Church potluck. Mm-hmm. Um, if you bring it to a church potluck, and uh, we'd love to hear how people how people enjoy it. So, uh, oh, yeah, I'd love to see a picture of this, like snapshot on the table, surrounded by right? all the like corn casseroles and and yeah. other things mm-hmm. that show up. Absolutely, because this would be right at home there. So uh, that's all the time we have for this episode. You can always find our Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on your favorite podcast app and join our community on Facebook if you're not there already. There's a lot of women there who uh, like to talk about a lot of stuff. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge.